What would you do if you found yourself a million dollars in debt after starting your own heating and plumbing company in your 40s? I would be on the floor in a little ball. And maybe that happened a little bit to Susan Frew, but she got through it. Listen in to today's inspiring interview from my friend, Susan Frew. Hello, dreamers. Welcome to the Late Starters Club, giving you the inspiration, mindset, and tools you need to start something midlife and beyond. Remember, it's never too late to follow your dreams. Hello, dreamers. It's your host, Andrea Vall, here on the Late Starters Club podcast. I am joined by my friend, Susan Frew, who, my gosh, talk about a renaissance woman. She has started her own heating and plumbing company, one of the biggest in this Denver area. She's an entrepreneur. She's a speaker. She is a thrifter. She's had multiple (laughs) different careers, (laughs) telecom executive, but what I like forever, Jersey girl. So welcome, Susan. Hey, thank you, Andrea. I'm I'm so excited to be here with you today. Super excited. So I want to dive first into, among all the things that you do, I want to dive first a little bit into starting a heating and plumbing company as a woman in your 40s, like, you know, back a number of years ago. And I know you have had such a journey with that whole, uh, that whole business, but tell us what, why you started it what prompted that what how did that come about how i got into the plumbing business well i was with at&t in new york city and they transferred me to denver and then from denver i got transferred to the country of grenada and saint vincent of the grenadines for two years and i was general manager for two the two countries there and when i came back i went to breckenridge and i bought a business coaching franchise so i had a nice package i had money in the bank i bought a house i bought a car i bought this business franchise and you know things were going pretty well but it was 2007 right so right around the corner some ugly things were about to happen and during that time the franchise asked me to sit down with this guy and tell him about my franchise experience which is kind of commonplace so I'm telling him you know I'm speaking and I'm on the radio and uh, it's fabulous and all things are great and I have all these customers and at the end of the ta- uh, end of our conversation, I said, so where do you want to put your franchise? And he says, oh, right here in Breckenridge. So I instantly hated this guy, like hated him. So where, <laughs> wherever I would go for the next five years, there he was. Uh, and in 2012, he became my husband. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, he never did buy the franchise, but he had a background in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning. And, you know, around that time, though, uh, the recession was really in full swing, and he was doing new construction. There's still people, I think, who owe him money uh, from back then. And uh, so we just moved to, down to Denver, and I still was coaching for a while. He was starting up the plumbing company. We decided to only do s- service. We, we mm-hmm. fix and we replace. That's it. We don't do anything new construction, no remodels, nothing like that. You know this. You've been a customer of ours. And we did yeah. that because it's really recession proof. And we mm-hmm. also know that now because the uh, private equity guys are circling the wagons because uh, <laughs> businesses are very, very strong in any economy. So that's right. how we started. I wasn't in the beginning. I was coaching the business from the side but you know really when you're married that's called nagging and uh so (laughs) in 2013 i guess i dove in and became uh, ceo and 51 percent owner of sunshine and you know i've been in and out over the years you know full time and then i go and you know step away and now i'm in for the rest of the the, the, yeah. le- the rest of the hall is now. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think it's so exciting and amazing that you just dove in with, you know, obviously your husband had that background, but you didn't, you had to learn like, you know, everything. And, and I think for sure, you know, bringing in some of your past experience just in the corporate world probably helped as well as the coaching, I would imagine. It did. And weirdly now, you know, if I I tally them up every once in a while, I've coached 19 different trades 
And wow. when I was, I was doing uh, work for the SBA on 2012 to 14, I was teaching their emerging leaders program. And almost all of my students were in different uh, varieties of construction. So I learned so much that I was able to bring to the table of sunshine of what to do and what not to do. <laughs> right. And, and I think the other thing that helps your business probably is just being a woman owner of a heating and plumbing company, you know, like myself, I just, I don't know, there's, I just gravitate towards that. And I think there's probably a lot of people who, a lot of women, especially who might be on their own and feel more comfortable just doing business with a woman owned company like that. Absolutely. And at one point, I think I was tallying up that like 80% of our calls were coming from women. And wow. I, I did this, uh, I did this talk a few years ago it was called what women want in their service provider <laughs> and I, <laughs> I went to the women's chamber and i interviewed all of these women and i and i put this this video together and then i turned that into a keynote and i yeah. started delivering that keynote and i jokingly say to old white guys i'm like this is what women want like are you yeah. delivering this level of service are you you going this right. extra mile and are you right. are you mansplaining <laughs> because they don't want that right so <laughs> it's been right. an educational experience too yeah yeah that is so great and i know you've had some ups and downs with this whole business and we'll get into that but you know what i love too is that you are marketing it in a non-traditional way. You're on TikTok, you're doing short videos uh, about heating and plumbing, you're doing fun little poems and songs and whatever you're doing <laughs> for the business. And it's it's just really, it's really great, really great. And now you're like, you've grown this to, you know, kind of an award-winning multi-million dollar business, right? Yeah. So we, uh, we started out uh, one year one uh, at 177,000, which in the plumbing business, you end up walking away with 12 cents because like <laughs> our, our parts are super expensive and our net margins. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, if we could squeak out 10%, it is a banner year uh, yeah. that, you know, it's very unusual that, that yeah. you have that because parts are expensive and there, it costs a lot to run our kind of right. company. Like I think our insurance is $90,000. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And then and our you know, all budget. the, yeah, yeah. And the labor and everything, all the, the staff that goes into it as well and the trucks and everything, you've got such a lot of overhead. Yeah. Absolutely. So you've kept, you know, people, you've people kept... like, I found that part on Amazon. Oh, okay. Well you need this guy who's like $8 million an hour. And then he's going to drive that <laughs> truck because he won't drive a piece of crap truck. Uh, and then yeah. we have to buy parts that go up every single day. So that is why it's not the same price as it is on Amazon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally, totally, totally. So, you know, as you were starting this business, like what have been some takeaways to your biggest success with this and the you've had some great longevity and all that and but what have been some takeaways for what has been part of your success well we started out with this uh really so there was 950 competitors in our market when we entered so uh we just made our delivery of our services different than everyone else so uh we were doing these angie's list toilet tune-ups they were uh, i think the, the customer would pay 25 dollars, and we would get 12 dollars and 50 cents and it was called an angie's list big deal and william didn't know the geography around here he was originally from detroit and then he was in breckenridge so he didn't know denver so he didn't know the difference between Castle Rock and like Boulder. So he was running all over town doing these toilet tune-ups and we'd get $12.50 mailed to us. And then we would send the people, send out cards, card and brownies, wow. and which cost $8. And the brownies, <laughs> in case people know we're from Colorado, they were not Colorado brownies. They were just <laughs> regular brownies but people remembered us that we did that and they would post it on social media and then we started sending uh gift baskets for larger purchases when we started doing hvac and then we started you know it's very difficult to get people to work on call and on the weekends and to keep them sober for that whole time so we uh, started just putting people in hotels 
-hmm. So if your heater broke in the, on a Saturday night, uh, you know, I would use my miles and points from speaker business and uh, yeah. put people in a Hampton Inn for the night wow. and never lost a customer that way. So we would just really try to go out of our way. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I, I think when I step away, uh, I think our service delivery s slips. And so now I'm committed so that, you know, we're on the three to five yeah. and out plan now. So yeah. I'm full time. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And it's great to have a plan and great to have a vision and make sure you hit the target you're, you know, shooting for. for so that's, that's really great. So so now I want to talk about some of the obstacles and challenges because you had a huge challenge that you actually then turned into a whole keynote, right? <laughs> Basically. Yeah. Well, that's the one thing that's about a speaker, okay? I know. Beat the snot out of us because it will be a talk someday and, <laughs> you know, it will be all worth it. So we're going to, we're going to monetize our low points here. That's what... <laughs> But yeah, talk about some of the obstacles you ran into running this business. Well, you know, I was always straddling the fence between, you know, coaching and running sunshine. And, you know, I drank the Kool-Aid myself of how our uh, business coaching franchise was teaching people to be absentee owners mm -hmm. with which, you know, that is possible, but you need to have like a vault yeah. Of, uh, of locked uh, of policies, procedures, accountability measures, visibility, right. you know, people from the outside looking in, like you can't just like step aside. Mm -hmm. uh, like, you know, you'll watch people on YouTube saying how you could just work four hours a week. Okay, yeah. good. Go to Let the me beach. You yeah. run a service company in that many hours a week without some kind of shenanigans happening, mm -hmm. right? Because I always feel like I am in the middle of everything now. And I put my office in the middle of the shop. Uh -huh. uh, so I can see what's going on out there. And I learned so much about sitting yeah. in the middle of the shop. But what happened was, as I stepped away, uh, my speaking career was really picking up a lot of steam in uh, 2017. And then I did a TED talk about uh, women in the, in the trades and mm -hmm. our workforce shortage. And so, I, you know, I was booked like crazy. I was gone. And then I, I was tasked with writing this big coaching curriculum for the Plumbing Association. So that took up a bunch of my time. Meanwhile, I had a great office manager who, you know, she would, everything I would give her, she'd be like taking more, more, more. Yes. It was like amazing. It was like nirvana. Mm -hmm. And but then there are some red flags that I was willing to ignore. Like, how is she affording to take her entire family to Mexico on an all-inclusive vacation when, you know, she had her car repoed three months ago? Like, well, how, how is this happening? And then, wow, how is she always getting like mink eyelashes and uh, nail extensions and hair? Like, what the heck? So it turned out that I made a bad hiring decision. And because I was you know, living my life and being an absentee owner, you know, I was, I had my head in the sand and I didn't really want to know what was going on. And at the end of the day, uh, we parted ways with her. And then I really started digging into everything. And I just sat in her desk for about a month and it was like, oh my gosh. And I asked my friend Maria, who had a accounting background to come help me for about eight months. And we found so much stuff. It turned out, Andrea, we were a million dollars in debt. So we, uh, and how I found that out, part of that is one morning, a Saturday morning, I'm around the house doing errands and the doorbell rings and it's a certified letter, never a good thing on a Saturday. And it was from the IRS, but we owed $486,000 in payroll taxes. Oh my and gosh. Then, then I got a hundred and ninety nine thousand dollar fine on me personally for not supervising my employee. So Ugh. what I did is I had set her up on this plan where if she stayed on budget, she would get a bonus every single month. And the bonus was big because I wanted her to stay on budget. She could have she could never do that before. You know, the mean mm -hmm. eyelashes and the all inclusive vacations, you know, that doesn't work. Yeah. And so she was cheating. She was gaming the system. So what she would do is she would pay all of our bills, but only a portion of them. Mm. But she wouldn't pay the whole bill. Yeah. So she was shorting. So if we owed 5,000 in taxes, she'd pay four. If we owed four, yeah. she'd pay three and so on. And she yeah. did that with all of our vendors. And then we owed our vendors 175,000. Yeah. 
And then wow. look, we always have truck payments and that that's about 200,000. Right. Yeah. Um, so million dollars in debt. Uh, yeah. uh, that is just, that is just so, it must've been just terrifying. Just it, it was, you know, I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't eating. I was, my mental health suffered significantly. And it was a lot of humiliation and shame because we had to move out of our, we had this big shop on the highway and everyone knew we had this lighted sign and we'd have parties there and everything. And uh, we had to move into our basement and we did that for two years. Yeah. And that, that I think is the most amazing part of this story is that you did not declare bankruptcy, correct? You, you push through this and were able to work your way out of that million dollars in debt. That's an incredible, incredible feat. And it's, it's amazing. And, and it's, uh, what a, what a testament. How long did that take to get through that? Uh, it took a little bit over two years. Yeah. Uh, you know, we still carry some debt on our trucks. Sure. I and mean, I think we always will, right? Because yeah. there's always that, like, if we buy used trucks, they break down all the time. And, you know, right. so I think we're always going to have that that happening. And that I think that's okay. Yeah. Um, well, we have, yes. And we, we, we've had some, like, little loans over the years for things. But, yeah, we pretty much, so what we did is we, we downsized into the basement for two years. And then we had got this little shop down in Commerce City, which I actually love the location. It's right by Northfields. It's perfect. And when, uh, so after the two years was up, the the space next to ours became available and it was like a double. So we moved over and uh, then, you know, now we're kind of back on track again. And we really just went down to ground zero. Uh, we scraped it all down to the ground. We got a new pricing system. We added prices on our website, which mm-hmm. is unheard of uh, in our yes. industry. Like we are hated by our competitors for that. And that's yes. okay because I don't want people to have anxiety. Yeah. Uh, I came back full time and my message is two things. We are women owned and we really care about you. And mm-hmm. number two is we're going to offer you transparent pricing. Mm-hmm. And, and that's it. And my team is going to love you like you're their grandmother. Cause that's what yeah. I say to them. I want you to treat everyone's home. Like you're going to your grandmother's house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, a really hot grandma. Cause they were here, but like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Yes. But that, that is your team is amazing. And, and I love that you are f- flipping things on their head with some of this, because I think that's sometimes what it takes is how do you stand out in this crowded market and doing things really differently is mm-hmm. a big, is a big way for sure. And, and, and I think people appreciate that. That's when you hear what people want and you give it to them. That's, that's incredible and amazing. And why not? So, well, congratulations to you for getting out of that debt and, and keeping your company afloat, keeping going. And now, you know, again, being, back in the right space and the right, the right place for you. And I think some of these things happen for a reason and, you yeah. know, make you stronger and give you a good keynote, right? <laughs> yes. And, you know, and now I, I coach very few people uh, mm-hmm. now and, and I do have three clients and they mm-hmm. are people that two are in my industry uh, and one is not, but they are ones that from my experience that I'm helping them power through this. Mm-hmm. And that's something I'm really proud of. I won't take any more than that though, mm-hmm. because yeah. I can't be distracted. You know, so my goal is two really good keynotes a month, which is very doable. And and that's it. And run sunshine the rest of the time. And yeah. I'm, and I'm there almost every day. I was there this morning. We did a training and uh, now I'm in my home studio, but I have a setup down there too. So yeah. if I'm down there, I can do it wherever I am. I'm ready to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And I want to also talk about your, your third career, your, or your whatever, however many careers, it's like probably probably like 15th, your, your thriftinista career. Cause I love that as well, because I think that, you know, it's again, so different and just shows that you're a multi-passionate person. Talk about how that business came about and kind of where you're taking that. Yeah. My side hustle on my side yes. hustle, right? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, a woman named who was working with us a couple of years ago, and you may even know her. I think she's up, was up in your neck of the woods. Her name's Melody Reagan. And she mm-hmm. was 
doing our marketing for us, crazy good marketing. And I, she, she knew about me and the thrifting and all these people would ask me to take them thrift store shopping. Cause that became like a passion of mine during the recession. Cause I knew how much great clothes costs. And yeah. when AT&T sent me to the Caribbean, I got a $10,000 uh, clothing budget because what? I needed to be like, cause I was working in the you know, this colonized Caribbean community. And it was extremely yeah. formal. And that was part of the international perks, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, I knew how much, and I lived in New York City for a lot of time. So I know how much great clothes cost. I know all my yeah. labels. And during the recession, you know, things were tight. And I just started thrifting. And I would get Ann Taylor pants for $5 instead of 80. And I was like, this makes great sense. So then people started asking me to take them shopping. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I do not have time. I'm like, maybe I just need a bus. Yeah. So this woman in my rotary club said, I have a bus and, and we'll make it a fundraiser. And I was like, perfect. And then Melody Reagan came up with the idea. She's like, look, think about this. You should have all the ladies meet at your shop. And now you're going to have 40 ladies who own homes come to your shop. We're going to go on this fun bus tour. But then they learn about sunshine, plumbing, heating, air. Perfect. So <laughs> that's how it started. And yeah. uh, so it started kind of as marketing, kind of some, but we've raised, uh, the first year we raised $10,000 for different charities. We get the bus donated, people pay to come on the bus, and then I teach them how to thrift. And we go from shop to shop. And I just put a website up a few weeks ago teaching people how to clean out their closet. So I have sort of a system for that. And then how do you go and buy new things and, you know, build a wardrobe? So mm -hmm. I'm not a wardrobe consultant or anything like that. I just love to shop. I love to teach people how to do it my way, which is the, the really amazing way. You saw me the dress the other yeah. I, I had oh on my God. Night, yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. You guys like, first of all, she's in her sunshine plumbing and heating <laughs> t-shirt right now, but Susan always looks fabulous. Like, and I've been on her uh, thrifting kind of meetups and things like that. And I hate shopping and I have found the most amazing things there. So yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah, that, that dress the other night was a Tadasi Shoshi, which uh, for people who might be listening, if they're fashion people or they follow like People Magazine because Tadasi Shoshi is on the red carpet all the time, the couture version. And that dress was actually Tadasi Shoshi couture. And it was a $400 dress or they're about 380 something. And I got it for $27. Oh um, my gosh. Mark. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, and I don't sell things. I just, I just buy them and then I'll donate yeah. them or, or what have yeah. you. But yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm saying that's going to be my retirement business. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you really enjoy that. That's really fun yeah. for you. You're good at it. And it's just, yeah, it's a fun, fun little side hustle. Like you said to your side hustle. So <laughs> That's, that's so great. So now how do you keep all this? I, this isn't uh, one of the questions we went over, but now as we're talking, I'm, I am just fascinated. How do you keep all this rolling and what's your, do you have any special time management tips with all of these different things you're doing or how do you keep sane? Well, you know, what we did mention is that I took a full-time job for a year in the middle of all this, which was really insane. I was doing no one a favor by doing that. I was not, I was not serving in the way that I uh, could have or should have. I mean, I was so burnt out and it was just so much. I would get up at five o'clock in the morning and I would go down to Sunshine. I'd work there for two hours and I'd come and work at the other job. And then uh, I would do speaking on this. Like it was insanity. But I think uh, looking back, and it's interesting because we're, we're writing a book now about this business owner trauma with Dr. Sally Spencer Thomas. And um, one of the things, you know, to preserve your mental health through all these tough times and through all the stress is you, kind, you really need to have a plan. And for me, my plan is exercise. Uh, I, I have to exercise like it, jokingly there's those t-shirts like burn off the crazy well like it's real in my world like I've got to like it's not a like I'd like to go work out and get fit no no it's I need to go because I will kill you right? <laughs> like, and I am from New Jersey right so like I kind of like go big on those those things and then uh -huh. you know just eating right and taking really good care of yourself and and something else which you know is really hard is you have to 
really be selective who your circle of friends are. And unfortunately, I've had to drift apart from some folks because maybe they party too much or maybe they were too negative or, or something like that. Like when you're trying to get through a lot or if you have a lot on your plate like that, your time is super valuable and you want to share it with people that are positive and motivating and supportive of you. Uh, you know, you, you can't give that energy away. It, I mean, that's yours. That's your mojo. That's like what's taking you through life and you, you can't hand it off and, and let somebody rain on it. Yeah. Yeah. That is such a great tip. Cause I think, I think especially as we've gotten older and me personally and realizing that I don't have to be nice to everybody just because, you know, they're demanding my time or whatever. And, and it is an energy. You want to stay away from those energy vampires for sure. Yeah. So absolutely. that is, a, that is a great tip. Have you had like some, uh, influencers or teachers that you have learned from that have been really influential along your journey here as you've uh, done all these different things? Well, I think that, uh, you know, National Speakers Association has been a blessing for me. And I know you understand this, like once yes. you find your people, right, mm -hmm. like they they are there, right? Like they understand you, like they they would understand, be like, well, I can't wear this color blue because it's going to look really weird on film. And like your regular friends from down the street, you're like, what? What is wrong with you? What kind of evil maniac are you? Like, why do you care? Well, my speaker friends would understand that. Uh -huh. Right. Uh, I So I think that's a big part of it. I, I was very fortunate to get into a mastermind in National Speakers Association uh, that has helped me, you know, right from the beginning of some amazing people in there, like headline people that I'm like mm -hmm. so like starstruck by them and you know Ruby and Dawn and uh you and Nora and like all all the ladies from NSA have just been so powerful and so strong and such great role models of showing that you know you can do this you can get paid uh you know you can have a career here and you can have a lot of fun so yeah. I think that was really really important and uh, when yeah. I was going through all those rough times with the business I think that the mastermind was a lifesaver for me because they've been through all those seasons with me and uh, right. keeping my uh, the surrounding the elephant circle around you of people protecting you. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love that. Yeah, you're part of Susan's keynote is really yeah. talking about the elephant circle of protection there, and I think that's that's such a huge, uh, great metaphor for how to surround yourself with protective friends who are family. And yeah. 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 So I'd love also making sure people share a, one of their favorite quotes, their favorite things that inspire them. So what is your, some of your favorite things that are inspirational to you? Well, you know, in those really dark days that, uh, when we were a million dollars in debt and I didn't think we would get out and I knew there's no way I was going to file for bankruptcy. Like I, your, your show is called late starters club, late starters. When you file for bankruptcy, when you're older, you have just screwed your retirement up really bad. And yeah. uh, I did not have that runway to like do the bounce back, recalibrate and rebuild. <laughs> I'm like, we have to get through this. And, yeah. you know, I've always loved Les Brown. Uh, he's one of my favorite motivational people. I also love Joel Osteen. Like he's my Tony Robbins. Uh, mm -hmm. I also learned a lot from him about speaking because he's amazing. Yeah. It's an amazing uh, keynoter. But Les Brown says, if you can look up, you can get up. And, and I know that's really simple, but there were times where I literally <laughs> was like in the fetal position and I could hear Les Brown in that powerful voice going, so you can look up, you can get up. And like, I just started looking up and that was yeah. all <laughs> one foot yeah. in front of the other. Yeah. I love that. I love that. That just kind of gave me chills too, because it is really about setting your sights on the direction you want to go. Right. And that is up and, uh, and, and just that whole getting knocked down and you were knocked down so hard with that, with that million dollars in debt. And it's awesome. You've gotten up and you've, you've thrived and are an inspiration to women in doing all the different things you're, you're doing. So thank you. Thank so you. Much. 
Yeah. Thank you, Susan, for coming on to the show. And and if anyone is in the Denver metro area, I highly recommend Sunshine Heating and Plumbing. They have been awesome. My house is nice and toasty warm. It was so freezing. You guys took such great care of me. And uh, (laughs) and, and yeah, where can people find you and get connected to you? Uh, Well, if you Google us in Sunshine Home Services, we're in Commerce City. Uh, we're, you know, we're located right there by Dick Sporting Goods Park. So if you want to stop in and say, hey, uh, you know, just make sure you, you know, lock your car. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's probably the best way. And, yeah. you know, you can always find me at, at Susan Fru uh, Speaks Great. somewhere. Yeah. At, yeah. At and then your platform. Right. And your Thriftinista business. Is that, yes. you have a Thrift new website? Yes. Thriftinista is on Facebook. I also have a website now. It's thrift, thriftinista.shop. Okay. So uh, we'll have those. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have those links in the show notes for people and everything. So definitely get connected to Susan. She's got great tips. And so thank you, Susan. Thank you, Andrew. I appreciate it. Bye guys. Bye. Hope that was helpful and make sure you grab the free guide, Top Tools for Late Starters on the website at latestartersclub.com. And let's turn dreaming into doing.